Come on, church, lift up your hands in this place this morning. He is here, he is here, Jesus is here. He is here, he is here, Jesus is here. Just keep going through those chords, just keep playing through that worship team, just keep going. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's in this place. There's a river that makes glad the city of God, and it's in this place. There's a river that makes glad the city of God, and it's in this place. It's in this place. Let the river flow from inside you. Let the river flow from inside you. Making all things new. Making all things new. It's in you, it's in you, it's in you, it's in you, it's in you. It's inside of you. It's in you, it's in you, it's in you, it's in you. It's inside of you. There is a river that makes glad the city of God. It flows from his throne. It's inside you. It's inside you. It's inside you. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. This this month, we have set our heart and our mind. I, I, I like what is said of Jesus. It said he set his face like flint. Like old man on the rock before it fell down. He set his face like flint towards Jerusalem because he knew what was coming. Sometimes we just got to have good old Holy Ghost resolve. I'm going into the season and I know what God has required of me and I'm going to do what he said and I'm going to leave all the rest to him but I'm going to move and I'm going to set my face like flint I'm going to be a little like Jesus I'm not going to waver I'm not going to go back and forth I'm not going to be tossed to and fro right now I'm going to set my directional arrow towards heaven Woo! that's what we're doing as a church And the scripture, Isaiah chapter 43 and verse 19, says this. And this is kind of the the overarching thing that I think the Lord is saying to us in the I'm doing a new thing. Isn't that funny? Sounds a lot like 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, excuse me. Behold, old things have passed away. I'm making things new. Behold, I'm doing a new thing. How many of you all know that a new thing isn't It's inside of you. The renewable resource of the Holy Ghost that makes things new every day. How many of you all know he can make things new every day? Whoa, man. Yes. How many of y'all like a new car with a new smell? The new sweater you bought that still has a fresh smell of being on the rack. How many of y'all like the, even the, the fresh smell of new snow tires? I don't know what's a matter with me, but I like the smell of new. Anybody else? Behold, I make all things new. Now it springs forth. Not tomorrow. Not yesterday, right now, this moment. God wants to break something free in your life and make things brand new. How many of y'all wouldn't mind just for one minute of all the old stuff of 2021 and 2020 was gone and God let something spring forth now, this morning, brand new. Woohoo! Yes! 
Let it be, Jesus. Let it be. Do you not perceive it? Some people are going to miss it completely. We're going to go through this fast. Things that people are going to get rocked. People are going to get shook to the very foundation. And others are just going to go, ho oh. I like another version's rendition of this. It says this. Shall I not make it known? Shall I, ma- shall I not make it known? Whoa, man. I want to know the secrets of the Lord in this hour. I don't want to hear what Facebook or media has to say about something. I want to get the thus say of the Lord download from heaven on what's happening right now with Chad. Here it is. I will make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. The other night, Patty and I were lying in bed. And I don't want to appear super spiritual when I say this. I feel like there's things that are coming upon this earth in the next 10 years. I'm not trying to make you scared. That are going to make this pandemic look like play stuff. And I can see it coming and I can feel it coming. And in bed that night, I said, Patty, all I want is for God to stand up in the middle of it and differentiate himself from all other gods and all other discourse about how all religions are one. God, you are the God that separated yourself in the day of Moses when you split the Red Sea and you caused the Egypt to grow hard. God, you differentiated yourself in the days of Elijah in front of the prophets of Baal. God, you differentiated yourself in the days of Acts when the Holy Spirit came down and you convinced every doubter as the apostles went out with signs and wonders. Man, if there was ever a time, and we just got to get desperate for this, that the God of Elijah would show up and show out and show himself for who he truly is. It's now. And you may not feel desperate, but I'm telling you, if your kids don't see the God of Elijah on display, they're going to fall for the God of this world. Man, I want them to see something that's more real than me standing on this stage. I want them to be utterly convinced that the God of Elijah can be counted on and that he lives. And he's as powerful as the stories we're telling them in kids' church. They actually happen. Somebody's got to get desperate. I mean, how much more has to hit this world? How much has to hit our lives before we turn with every bit of our unction and every bit of our passion to the only one that can help us. I mean, what else has to happen? All the meanwhile, the church is deathly sick with its immoral lifestyle and deplorable, low, deplorably low morals, thinking that we can attract people by becoming like them. I'm telling you. God is utterly different. He resides in the third heaven and is three times holy. That's the God that we're approaching. He's utterly above us. That's the God we're trying to get people attracted to. And we shouldn't short hand or short arm what God wants to do through us. I'm not trying to look like you, act like you, dress like you, play your music. I'm trying to exalt the name of Jesus. And he said he would draw all men to himself if we lifted him up. I didn't plan on saying any of this. But who wants to be that bride that comes through those double doors for Jesus? I'm not projecting it on Patty. I'm not projecting it on my staff nor my church. Even though I have to take my responsibility. I'm asking God. I'm asking God to make me the bride without spot or wrinkle. When you say and declare the words, build your church, those words are going to heaven and coming right back to your soul. Come on, let's just declare that a few times. Build your church. Come on, declare it. Sing it, God. Upon this rock, you will build your church. You're going to build my life. 
church. And the gates of hell. And the gates Come on, church, lift it up. Will not when you bind and loose. Hallelujah. When we bind and You proclaim his truth. We proclaim your truth. And in Jesus' name, and yes. In Jesus Church, build your church. Build it from the ground. Build me up. Build, 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 build me up. Build me up, Jesus. Church. Not for my build own glory. God, that we build can reflect your glory. Build your, build, your build your church. Will your church. Will your church. Build us. Build it from the ground. Yes, hallelujah. Will your church. Yes, God. As we stand in the presence of God, Thank you, Lord. I realize that in order to open the new doors that God wants to open, His new thing that He wants to do, we may need to shut the door on some old stuff. Anybody out there know what I'm talking about? Say yes. We need to shut the door on some old stuff so that God can open doors that no man can shut and help us shut doors that no man can open. And so many times we relegate our God experience to church or the past or everything that we experienced beforehand. And I just want you to think about one thing, that God wants to do a new thing and it's not held captive by the box of your past experience. It's not held captive to the box of your expectations when you walk in this door every Sunday. How many of you all know that the God that we declare in the leather bindings of our Bible, he can do mighty things. Nothing is too difficult for him. And so this morning, I want to ask you to close the door on your expectations of what God can do in your life and in your church so that you can be open like a newborn child to brand new belief. The things that are written about in the Bible, maybe we could actually believe for those things. The God that caused the sun to stand still. The God that halted a plague, a pandemic, a pestilence. Like there's all kinds of stuff. Like we've given up. We don't even think it's real. It's stupid to say that stuff. Man, God did that stuff. And I wanna close the door on false expectations, limited expectations, and I want God to open doors into new realities and new levels and new power. Are you out there this morning? So right now, if you're that person like, all right, the good, the bad, the ugly, 
of the last couple of years. I'm going to, by the Spirit, close the door on those things. If that's you, I want you to rush to this altar now. If you don't feel comfortable, man, maybe you just need to jump out of your seat or whatever and just get in the aisle. That'll be good. But get out of where you're at. If you're feeling this, if you're not feeling it, you don't have to. But come close if you're comfortable. If not, you can find an altar outside of your seat. Come on. Everyone that wants to close the door. And look, it might not have been that bad. It may have not been that terrible. But you're closing the door on what you thought God could do, on what happened, of your expectations, which might be really low, and you're shutting the door on that so God can open a new door. Come on. Anybody else? Jesus. You're going to do a new thing in this place, God. You're going to do a new thing in this place. And we stand here, God, not as sanctified saints. We're just going through the motions. God, we come as a dry desert place today. No matter how much spirit we've experienced, God, we come as a dry desert. God, and we ask you right now to fracture the fabric of reality between heaven and earth. God, and I pray in that fracture, God, you would rush into our existence. You would rush into our reality, rush into our spirit. Father, break through in our individual lives in this place like a mighty river. If you're ready for that, just throw your hands up. You may not be up here. I just want to see where everybody's at a little bit here. So Dylan's going to sing this song, and if you want to join in, if you know it, that's cool. If not, it's a prophetic word. It kind of declares some stuff from the scriptures for us. And it, it's from Isaiah 54 and Isaiah 43. The first part of it is this, and it's you're singing it to heaven for yourself. And it says this, sing, sing, O barren land, water is coming to the thirsty, to the empty. That's what you're singing over yourself. It was a prophecy of Rachel. She had no children, and God said, you're going to have more children than the person that could have children. I'm going to give you spiritual children. I'm going to give you a harvest. I'm going to give you fruitfulness in this dry season, in this barrenness, in this womb that won't develop or produce. I'm going to give you something. So this morning, no matter where you're at, no matter what your expectations are, as you close the door, on the old and press on to the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Rivers. Wherever the river goes, Ezekiel 37, wherever the, the river is, things will live. Things will come to life. So you're calling down, you're declaring prophetically the river of God into your own life. Here we go. Just receive it this morning. Hallelujah. This is the word of the Lord, your creator. I am the God who stood before the world was framed. I am the first, the last, and everything between. I hold your future who could know these things but me so don't fear I will be your song oh, sing sing oh barren land water is coming to the thirsty though you are empty I am the well, draw from me, I will provide. Oh, this is the word of the Lord, your creator. Oh, I stand from age to age, the ancient of days. Oh, of 10,000 and 
And all who call upon my name, they shall be saved. So don't fear, I will be your song. Spirit on the broken, give him beauty for your ashes and joy for your sadness in the morning. Sing it out. Because I'm a river in the desert, I'm pouring my spirit on the broken. declare this morning over your life heaven's open come on sing it do you want to open heaven over your life come on heaven's open heaven's open Making ways in the wilderness. Yes, you are, yes, you are. Making rivers in the desert. Oh, we declare you're making ways in the wilderness. Right here, right now. Making rivers in the desert. You are the way, you are the way in the wilderness. Come on, declare this morning, you're the way. You are the river in the desert. Come on, declare. You are the way in the wilderness. You are the way in the wilderness. Yes, you are, God. Yes, you are. You are the river in the desert. Sing it again. You are the way. You are the way. You are the way in the wilderness. Yes, you are. You are the river in the desert. Holy. You are the way in the wilderness. Yes, you are, God. You are the river in the desert. Doing a new thing right now. Yes, you are, yes, you are. Rivers of living water. A new thing right now. Rivers of living water.
Deus.